motivation. Does it make a difference? They love to run these guys, these players. But sometimes they like to play a bit of football as well. And uh, maybe he persuaded that this guy seemed, actually seemed to enjoy himself. He didn't realize that he was going to lose the ball a few minutes after that. But uh, he seemed to be quite happy at least with that ball. So, you can control it. You just find the right moves for that particular type of activity. Let me just take you through a few studies we did recently where we focused on, the, on what we call the speed endurance production training. So we're talking about the anaerobic training, we have the speed training, we have the speed endurance training, and I'll just take you through a few studies with production training. And these were not performed with football players, but were done with endurance athletes. What we did, one study, 16 runners, divided them in two groups, four weeks with reduced amount of training, but including now speed endurance training, in a way where they did 30 seconds, 90 to 95 percent of the maximum speed, with three minutes of rest, eight to 12, 12 times. What happened? So the training was that they decreased from about 44 kilometers per week, with a speed average speed about 13 kilometers per hour, to about six kilometers. So a reduction in the amount of training, but during those 30 seconds intervals, they performed significantly. Uh, higher speeds. What happened with the intermittent exercise performance, as we've seen in the yo-yo test, intermittent recovery test, what happened when doing that? They had a 19% improvement. Reduction, 15% of the normal training, at 19% increase in performance. Not too bad, is it? We also tested them on the, in the laboratory, in the treadmill, what happened there? Improvements in the first exercise part, 25%. 18% in the second. So can we explain that now? Maybe, maybe not. But what happened then? We took a muscle biopsy on these guys. They you remember those alpha 1 and alpha 2 now from the sodium potassium pump and the beta. And what did we see? Significantly elevated levels of those. Despite they have reduced the training to about 15% of their normal training, they have an improvement of the number of subunits of that sodium potassium problem. Does that fit with our theory? Uh, two possibilities. Yes or no? And the answer is yes. More pumps, more potassium back, the better. There was a number of other problems we were missing and we will concentrate on them now. Okay. We could see also lower potassium levels. What happened with the 10K performance on average? So, no effect on the long-term performance. This is not what you do in real life. Go from one type of training to another type of training. So what did we do here? 25% reduction in training. We repeated those 30 seconds bouts, again with three minutes of rest. So they had not only that type of training, but we also still had some aerobic high intensity training, low intensity, and some moderate. But a 25% reduction in training. What happened with that? Significant improvement again in the first exercise bouts, as you can see here. What happened with the alpha and beta units? Here you have them again, alpha 1, alpha 2. A significant increase, at least in that case, in alpha 2. I won't ask you whether that fits with the serum. I think whether the answer could be the same as before. What happened now? Long term performance 10K, 37 minutes before, after six weeks of that type of training, 36 minutes. One minute improvement in a 10K, performing 30 seconds of exercise fast. You're not impressed. Six out of 12 runners had a new personal record, even though they've been running for more than five years. And they were happy. You're not, I can see that. But they were quite happy for the first time to run a 10K for some of them under 36 minutes. So it appears that that type of training is actually working. Does it work in football? 
And I won't make a long story out of that. Just say it looked like, because we had a group that did that for two weeks, a training similar to what you saw, reduction in the amount of training, but that speed endurance training. Here they had an improvement in the yo-yo intermittent recovery test, and we also had a group that were inactive. Don't stay inactive. Two weeks of inactivity has a significant effect on your performance. So that's new for you, isn't it? That was one of the new points. Don't stay inactive for two weeks. Speed. We also tested repeated speed, and you can see the group that performed that speed endurance training had a significant decrease in performance. Increase in performance, you said, because the times are shorter for a 20 meter sprint, 15 seconds of rest, so performance was better. Okay, we're approaching an end now, Mr. Chairman. Okay. What happened with the sodium potassium pump? It did also increase to these sort of pads. So two weeks apparently had a significant effect on their performance. So what do we do in real life? Yeah, we have to uh, apply that to the soccer field, and uh, we need to understand how are they actually working, the guys we are dealing with. For example, in this case, an Italian attack. So what did we do? Um, and this is about 10 years ago now. What did we do? Some very specific type of exercises for that attacker. He had the ball, and he was there. He was running back, received the ball, had a dribbling, put the ball back to to Zidane. Zidane played the ball down here, he turned around, got the ball down here. He was running around the cones, he was shooting. He was running there, received another ball, he was going around there, and he was shooting. 21 seconds, three minutes of rest, he's ready again. Is that a specific exercise for him? Looks like as he has a very characteristic way of running actually when he get back. He's turning here, and what does he do like this? He doesn't look at the ball. He did that in that exercise. Well, in this case, he understood he was going to get it. He doesn't do that always in the game. But a very specific exercise. Okay, so it's possible. The aerobic training, let me do that very briefly. Aerobic high intensity training, just one example. Deep. As you probably all know, five against five in this case, the green against the blue. The blue has the ball. If they have the ball, they can place one player there. The ball is played there. That means all the players have to go there. If they are not going there, you say maximum eight passes, then you have to go there. Then they start running. If they do too much, then it becomes anaerobic training. You say minimum eight passes. You can control everything. You're the coach. You don't ask anything. You just change the rules, and you are in control. This is not for top class players because that's not specific. So what do you do when you have a top class team? You put them in the position they are. In this case, to play eight against eight. And what's happening here? For example, this guy has the ball, Salieta. He loses the ball to some water. What's happening then? Okay. So as again, sees the opportunity. He goes there. What does some water does do? <coughs> He takes a little dribble and then he kicks the ball there. What's happening then? In order to score, all the team has to go there. What's happening then? He gets the ball. Who's going to support him? Now maybe Nedved could support him. Maybe Del Pierre could go there. Yes, he does. Because he needs the support. Maybe there are two touches, so they have to be there. So what are we doing now? We not only do <coughs> fitness training, we also do technical training. A long ball for some water. What is Trezeguet doing with the ball? He takes it, put it back. Who's coming there? Okay, there's some tactical things. We have a guy coming. So suddenly they are playing in their position as in the game. So we have the tactical aspect, we have the technical aspect, did we have the physical aspect? Yeah, we have a good chance to evaluate that. One way is, especially in the hard way, then you can go and see how each player has reflected to that type of activity. And you see that these two players, they are reaching those 95% maximum heart rate by doing this. Did it work? Apparently, yes. And you can be more specific. So, that was the end of my introduction to this scene. And uh, if you have an interest in reading more about it, there is a book, and you can also look at this uh, homepage if you have an interest in understanding further about some of the 
things that we are dealing with, but also there's a resume of different scientific studies, so it may be worthwhile to visit that once in a while. And uh, by that, I would like to thank you and all the people that have contributed. This is just a part of them. And uh, by that, I would like to thank you. Thank you.